Hi my dog lovers, this is Dr. D and today I have chapter 2 of our health and longevity course. Do you ever ask whether your dog's body contains any toxins, whether it's mercury, arsenic, lead or other elements? I never asked this until about 10 years ago when I started to see that uh, some dogs that had seizures um, had elevated levels of mercury from hair testing that I started to do. And that brought me onto the question whether we should be more careful about what we feed our dogs and, uh, and what supplements we give and also where our dogs live in the environment and what we use for cleaning, for gardening and uh, as pesticides and all the other chemicals in our environment. In the first part of our health and longevity course, I mentioned that the most important part of um, keeping our dogs healthy is to have open mind and also knowing uh, what we don't know. I also talked about nature and how fantastic it is when it comes to maintaining health and, and uh, how the best way to keep our dogs healthy is actually following the nature's principles of healing. If we follow nature, the first logical step to eliminate potential cause of disease is actually to detox and eliminate all the toxins. This is the step that uh, is very universal and uh, dogs are no exception. Disease is most commonly caused by multiple factors. Uh, there is not just one factor that is the cause of a disease, even though often we like to see the bacteria or virus or certain toxin as the only cause of the disease. For example, when there is a virus entering our body, the immune system would normally stop it from uh, causing a disease. But when the immune system is weakened and the body is weakened with toxins and stress, then the virus can actually embed in the cells and multiply. Another example is kidney disease because most people believe that it's just genetically predisposed or caused by bacteria, but there are many other factors. It can be caused by injury to the lumbar spine, which is crucial in feeding, energetically feeding the kidneys. Or there can be lack of access to water or processed food or the use of um, anti-inflammatory medication that causes disease. So all those can contribute to the final diagnosis of kidney disease. Another interesting example of multifactorial problem is epilepsy because I've discovered over the last several years that uh, dogs with elevated levels of mercury have much higher chance of having epilepsy. However, epilepsy is also genetically predisposed and it can be also caused by toxin buildup other than mercury or liver dysfunctions. So if you look at all the different conditions, uh, there's always many, there are always many factors playing a role in um, the occurrence of a disease and condition. Ultimately, when it comes to any disease, um, it mainly relates to the failure of the immune system or the detox processes in the body to protect the body. And uh, we know that accumulation of chemicals and drugs and vaccines and uh, toxins and food additives can actually cause many different imbalances and it's pretty much impossible to say and detect which particular element caused the problem because there's never just one. When it comes to the process of creating health and preventing disease or treating it, the first step is definitely finding out what your dog's toxic levels are and also what minerals are missing. Most medical conditions happen gradually they don't happen from one day to another, but the disease and the imbalances build up over time. And then when it reaches the tipping point, then you start seeing symptoms. So it takes some time for disease to develop. And we do have plenty of opportunity to watch the body's signals and symptoms before the actual diagnosis is established. Unfortunately, quite often, people don't notice what is going on because they don't know what they don't know and they don't understand what certain symptoms or behavior mean. When it comes to toxins, there are some of the key ones that we know are causing harm and damage the health of our dogs. Good examples are mercury or arsenic, lead and strontium. You may naturally ask what foods are toxic and which ones are not. And it is a really difficult question to answer because it is almost impossible to know where food these days comes from 
and manufacturers are not obligated to test for all the toxins in food. Blood testing may seem to be a reasonable option for testing for toxins. However, blood itself provides only a moment, a snapshot, a time, what levels and what toxicity is in the bloodstream. Blood testing is mainly good for organ function testing. It can give us an idea whether your dog has good blood count and good levels of red blood cells and white blood cells or hormones. But when it comes to hair testing, it gives you a much more accurate way of determining what toxins your body and your dog's body contain. Hair itself is almost like a time capsule. When it's growing out, it bathes in the plasma from blood. The minerals and toxins are carried in the plasma and the hair as it's growing out seals the information. And then when you take the hair and you take uh, just a small piece of hair from the roots, maybe one to two inches, that piece will give you an idea what your dog has been exposed to in the last four to six months. This is one of the most accurate and best methods to determine what minerals and what toxins are in your dog's body. As of now, I have seen hundreds of tests of dogs and I've been able to recognize what dogs eat, whether they're on kibble or whether they're on raw or cooked diet with supplements and whether the supplements are synthetic or natural. And the accuracy of the, the test is so high that I've been able to recognize the pattern of, of what it looks like in the different groups of dogs. For example, I discovered that uh, arsenic um, is very commonly increased in dogs that have rice-based diet. Mercury is increased in dogs that have fish diet. Strontium is another element that has been present in dog food and especially essential oils that are made of fish and sardines or diets that have fish. And some people wonder why it is that strontium is much more likely to be passed on to our dogs from sardines, but it is relatively simple. Strontium is an element that is capable of replacing calcium. And since the Fukushima disaster, it has been released in the ocean. And because small fish is processed with the bones or eaten with the bones, it is much more likely that your dog will get higher loads of strontium if he or she eats sardines. Some people ask me whether hair tests should be done before we actually cleanse dogs, before we take them through the elimination process of toxins. And the answer is yes, because it'll give you an idea where your dog is starting and how the cleansing process works and whether it has been completed. What I do, I usually start with hair testing uh, before I start any treatments or at the time of starting treatments, collect a hair sample, send it to the lab. Now, some people wonder how it's all done and why it's so accurate. And it's relatively simple, well, simple, uh, scientifically simple. The hair is heated under very, very high temperatures. And when the hair reaches those high temperatures, it disintegrates into plasma. And then the atoms actually of different elements start shooting against the sensor and the sensor reads and, and quantifies the presence of different elements and toxins. It has been one of the most helpful methods of, of figuring out, determining why a dog is sick. And you know, sometimes you can have kidney disease or liver disease or muscular disorders or weaknesses or fatigue. And when you do hair testing, suddenly you have the whole picture and you understand that there is missing magnesium or selenium or zinc and other elements. I find that many dog lovers really enjoy reading the results and learning from them and then seeing the improvement over time when they implement the right cleansing process and give the right food and the right supplements. If you're here to learn how to keep your dog healthy and long living for many years to come, I believe that hair testing is one of the most important methods to implement. If you test your dog, you'll be able to see what minerals are missing and what toxicity there is, and then take the appropriate steps. And maybe you will get some answers to the conditions that your dog has been suffering from. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope I'll see you at chapter three. Take care, have a nice day.